Hi, this is Lisa and welcome to my channel. As you can see, the barn's coming along quite well. We still need the side piece right here. And this side is gonna be a show layout. However, my big concern right now is when I take photographs, there's no base. So we're gonna work on the aisle floor right now. First thing I need to do is find a base or something that fits the width of where you want it to go. Now for me, this is a 16 and a half by 11 and three quarters inch piece of press board. And I like this because it won't warp, it fits right, and it's also gonna be easy to store. So I don't have the whole length going at once. I'm gonna do piece by piece by piece. So here, piece of press board. So that I get a straight line, the first thing I'm gonna do is take some paper that I have and I'm gonna trace around the outside edge. So with that, you have the shape of the outline. Next, I've taken some scissors and cut along that edge. And when I put it back to test it, you can see it fits well. Next, I'm gonna take this paper and just hold it along the edge here. There's a little bit of tape. And then, with a pencil, I'm gonna trace this line onto the press board. I want to make sure that it's going to stay square and butt up squarely across the end, so I've checked these lines to make sure they're even. Now, with a good box knife and a ruler and quite a bit of pressure and quite a few times over, I'm going to cut this little bit out. Now I've cut this all out just with a knife. It took a little bit of pressure, but it wasn't that hard to get through. Now I'm going to check to make sure it fits. Make any adjustments you want and then move on to the other pieces so that they all flow smoothly along your setup. You can see now that I've got all the pieces cut. I've sanded off any rough ends I need and I've cut this only three millimeters past there to allow for this door. Since this is gonna be outside, this is gonna be a different inside. So all this now is ready to work on. Now, for the footing, you have to take into certain things into account. First off, is it good on the horse's legs? Uh, is it easy to clean? Is it non-slip? Does it look good? And you have to take all of those into account to decide what kind of flooring you want. One option for the flooring is concrete. Uh, now, concrete is hard on a horse's legs, but it's easy to clean and it's used in many, many barns. The thing with concrete is you can put rubber mats over top. So if you're interested in concrete, there's some neat spray paints you can buy that are textured, that look like concrete. Something like this is great. And if you spray that down the sides, you can add the black mat on top. Either way, if you're doing concrete, I would look for a nice textured spray, but not too textured as you don't want to ruin your model's feet. If you do want to do concrete, what I would do is spray a strip down here of the gray paint. If you want to do the whole thing, of course, that's fine. But then I would take some craft foam in black and run that about that far and make a foot or two away from the edge so that the horse has something to walk on. And I would put that all the way to the edge here. So you'd see the concrete running down the stride and then a craft mat foam craft mat to make it look like the horse has something good to walk on. Another option is either dirt or sand. And to do that, I would just cover this with white glue and then spray either real sand or real dirt over top. And you can buy some of those that are clean for you at uh, craft stores or train supply stores, or just use real dirt and real sand. That's another option, but in a real barn, that's very hard to clean. If you're looking to do more of an older barn, an antique look, 
you could do a worn weathered wood floor. So just use wood strips like we use here and you could do a wood floor. Again, easy on the horse's feet and it gives a very antiquated look. Crushed stone is also something used in a barn. And for that, I would recommend using a spray paint, a textured spray paint, somewhat like what I showed you for sand. It gives you that little stone textured look. Asphalt is one of the most popular barn materials in some of the high-end barns. It is non-slip, it's fairly easy to clean, and it gives a little bumpy look. It's not the regular asphalt generally, it is more of a, a lumpy asphalt. A lot of the high-end barns also use these dog bone or eye pavers. They're a thick rubber piece that's uh, cut out in an eye or a dog bone shape, and those have a beautiful look. So let's get to decide what I'm going to put in mine. What I've decided to use for mine is asphalt, the popcorn asphalt. And right here, I've cut myself a shape that I'm going to use for the eye bone or dog dog bone pavers. So if I have a horse tied up, getting tacked up, it's not in the wash stall, it can be tied here by a chain and the people can work around here. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to do this separately before I glue it on. I am going to do dog bone pavers. And to do that, below in the link, you'll find a pattern for these. If you take these and with a glue stick on the back, glue them down to craft foam, you can, yes, I went there, glue them, cut them out and then they'd be laid in the same way as you see in the actual picture. So that'll probably take a little effort, but I'm going to cover this full board I have here with these dog bone pavers before I do the asphalt. So to cut these, I'm just going to apply some glue stick on the back. You just want it to hold for a short while. and glue it to some craft foam. And once it's on the craft foam, starting at one end, the easiest way to cut it is to do a full line this way, and then a full line that way, and then cut through there. And it's actually not as hard as it looks. So I'm just gonna go along all the way through there and cut until I have enough to cover that board. What I'm doing here to lay the tiles is I've applied some cheap school glue along here and then tile by tile, I'm placing them on. I'm going along the whole route. If something's really off, I'll just switch to another tile or do a trim. And then, once you've got to a certain point, you can smoosh them around. Because they're soft, craft foam, it's not hard to smoosh them in there to make sure they fit. Here you can see I've placed all the tile, tiles on my piece of metal here. And I'm using metal for, purpose, uh, for the YouTube channel. And from here, I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to cut off the edges because I think a horse may trip over those edges or a person might. So I think it would nicer, smoother. Here you can see I've created my dog bone paver mat. It's gonna go around there. Now for around the edge and for all the other pieces, I want it to look like asphalt. So what I'm gonna use for that is asphalt cement. Uh, you buy this at like a Home Depot or similar uh, you, where you'd buy flashing for roofs or something. And there's no smell to this, and it's really easy to work with. It washes off your brushes with water. So when you apply this, I would use a larger brush like that to put it on, and then a smaller brush to stipple. And I just stipple it to give that nice little effect. So what I'm gonna do is take this off, put a layer, of the asphalt cement right over the entire thing. I'm going to stipple around the edges 
and I'm then going to place this where I want it on top and let the cement glue it down because it's very, very sticky. Here is my finished base. And uh, that is using the actual asphalt cement and the dog bone pavers. Now, it could be a little sticky, I guess, although nothing seems to be sticking like dog hair, but it has an interesting look and I'm happy with it. Now you can also see in mine, it's a little bumpy and every now and then you'll see where it's not 100%. I used the asphalt cement to build this up equal to or as close to possible as these metal plates I have. And I use those metal plates to keep these models standing, or the dolls standing upright. 